and welcome to episode 9 of series 6 of Master League Story Mode. So I've definitely used the expression a carnival atmosphere in previous series as just a way to describe it when uh, a certain team is doing very well and the city and the club itself is just a great place to be and I'm sure the Campinas and the, the Ponte Pretanos, the Ponte Preta fans are having a lovely old time and there probably quite literally are carnivals happening with huge effigies of Zico being praised and revered and prayed to as he has put together an incredible run. Yes, we are on the back of five consecutive wins and we're without a loss now since the first day of the season. Yeah, since the first day of the season. Pretty impressive. We're starting to look good up top and we've been pretty good defensively all the way through, which we're going to get to in a second as we take a look at one of our defenders. But yeah, can we keep this going? Obviously, the policy of pushing through youth certainly seems to be working out for us at the moment. Uh, today we go up against fourth place Londrina, that is at the Moises Lucarelli, and then up against 13th place Atletico Goyens. Um, yeah, two, I mean at the moment everything seems winnable, but I'm sure this streak cannot last forever. I'm not too bothered about continuing to win games, just continuing to get a point out of every game is what we need, just keep this momentum ticking over. We're not going to be winning every single game for the rest of the season, but if we can reduce the amount of losses we take, that'd be great. So with little more to talk about, let's just crack on, shall we? So as I said, we're inviting Londrina, who have had a very good start to the season, actually. We invite them to the Majestoso, to Campinas. And they've not had to come too far, to be honest. It's just about a six-hour journey inland from Campinas, just sort of to the west. And weirdly, there hasn't so far been any sides which we've played against who've been a really long trek away. I don't know whether all the good footballing teams are concentrated in the south of Brazil, which seems to be where we are at the moment, but so far, that is the case. And uh, Londrina, not a particularly big side. They finished eighth in the Serie B last season. They haven't played in Serie A since 1982, and uh, they were only in for six seasons before that. And that's the only time they've been in the top flight. So this is a very solid Serie B side. They may have dropped out of Serie B. I haven't actually checked that. But let's go and take a look at the sides today, see how they line up. Yep, so not that many good players for Londrina, but as I said, they are playing really well. They've started the season strongly. So before we look at the side today, I just want to draw your attention to Bruno Avini. He has been really good for us. Obviously, he had that absolute shocker in his debut. We brought him in on a free transfer. He was without a club at the beginning of this season. He was by far and away the highest rated and just all around best centre back that was available on the free transfer market. And uh, I never really had a look at him, never really investigated anything about him. And then thankfully, in the last episode, in the comments, I was pointed in his direction by Luis Mate. So thank you for your comments. Uh, really interesting to see Bruno Avini's career so far. I had no idea that he was uh, so highly rated as a youngster, which is what makes it so interesting of where he is now. So Avini played much of his youth career and the beginning of his professional career at Sao Paulo where he was a very, very highly rated youngster. He was actually the captain of the Brazil under-20 team, and he did go on to make an appearance for the full Brazil team. But things started to go wrong when his career took a very Gabby goal-like trajectory, and uh, that's how he finds himself now, quite happily, in a Serie B side. But uh, yeah, so he was at Sao Paulo. He actually only made eight appearances for the first team there. And then, bizarrely, he went on loan. This is in 2012 when he was just 20 years old. I think he went on loan to Spurs, didn't play a single game at Tottenham. And then from Tottenham, where he didn't play, he went on a full transfer to Napoli. who He joined in 2012, but didn't actually leave until 2016. He had played one game, one game for Napoli. I have no clue what happened there, but it did not go well. Again, mirrors with Gabby Gol, going to Serie A, going to Italy, just not working. During those four years as technically a Napoli player, he went on loan to Siena, where he played zero games. Santos, so back to Brazil, where he only played 11 games. Then finally, he went on loan to FC20, where he did play 33 games. But it didn't work out there either, and he ended up moving to Al Nasser in 2016, which was in the Saudi Arabian leagues. To be fair to him, he was there for three years. Maybe he found his level there. Played 69 games for them. But since then, this season, he's actually found himself at Al Wakra in the Qatari Stars League. So, yeah, a bit of a drop, really, from Spurs. Well... I mean, it's probably one more trip. No, I won't. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go down that route. I'm doing a Jermaine Defoe become a legend this year. I'm very much embracing my Spurs dark side anyway. So this is a player who had the world at his feet at age 19. And uh, I think he just made the big mistake of leaving Brazil too early and it just ruining his career. So it makes me even more excited 
to have him as such a key player in this side. A full signing as well, so we will have him next season. Can we get him into uh, into the Serie A Brazilian football? Can we get him back into the Brazilian national team? He is 28 years old. He's probably declining, but I think he's a great player. I think he has got just a, he's got pace for a centre back. Good in the air. He's strong. Great defensive awareness. Aggressive. He's got heading, interception, and long ball expert as well, which despite his poor passing stats, does seem to work. So yeah, Bruno Avini. Now we know a little bit more about him. And it's an absolute pleasure to have him in our side. Hopefully we can revive his career as we did, as we did with Gabby Goal. So with that out of the way, we can remind ourselves of who we actually play up top. And unfortunately, Broj, it's not you. And then obviously Oliveira has to start. Looked incredible in the last episode. Scored another good goal. Just looked a real bright spark. Exactly the sort of player we need in that position. Then the other decision to make is Renan or Abner at left back. Now this one is not such an easy decision. Eduardo is a clogger coming to the end of his career. Well, he's, you know, he's only 26. He just feels like an older player because he's so slow. He is a good player, great technically. He just doesn't have the drive that we need. He's going to rotate with Real. Uh, but Abner and Diego Renan, this is not an easy decision by any stretch of the imagination. And I think... If the form's the same, we probably go with Diego Reynan for the experience there. But Abner, so good. The Brazilian Roberto Carlos, they're calling him now. And 19-year-old youth, oh, it's so tempting just to play him, isn't it? So tempting. Oh, God, I don't know. It does give us three less team spirit, so we'll, we'll base it on that. Still only up to 66 team spirit after five wins on the bounce. It's pretty tight this year, isn't it? The old team spirit, they don't give it out for fun. Other than that... Everyone looks okay to start. Uh, Ivan, though, on a red. Do we bring in 64 rated Igor? Or do we take our chances? I think we take our chances. And let's get into it. So just to continue our biography on Bruno Avini, there's one crucial point that I forgot to mention as well. His dad, also Bruno Avini, but known in these parts, yet Campinas as Tuca, played at Ponte Preta as a youngster. It's just, it just fits. It's absolutely perfect. He is the key man for us. That's why we're going to leave him as the captain. He's come back to his home, sort of his home. His dad must be very, very proud. And uh, I've also just seen on his Wikipedia that he played in the London 2012 Olympics for Brazil. I watched some Brazil games at London 2012. I may have seen him play before. Oh, I just feel like I'm now a brother with him. Let's do this. Come on, Bruno. Let's get a goal. Expansive play there from Mandrina. I'm putting a lot of pressure on them, but they are very happy just to pass the ball along their back line. It's been frustrating. Can we break them down now, though? That's a good ball to Arnaldo. Plenty of time to look up here. Whip a ball in for Marilison. <laughs> yes! It just keeps happening. Bob Marilison. Bob Marlison. Bob Marlison. I like it. Bob Marlison. And uh, the three little birds at the moment, certainly Abner, Oliveira and Marlison, just playing really, really well. And yeah, Landrina looking to frustrate us in this opening 20 minutes. They've had a lot of possession, done absolutely nothing with it. We forced them then into a crossfield ball that simply didn't work. Allowed us loads of time here. He's on a blue arrow today, had time to look up, pick the cross. It's just a goal. It's just a goal when that is the case. Little tip for anyone playing Master League or Pez in general. If you want to put a cross into the box and there's no one there, just slow down. Take your time. Allow him to get straight on with where he's going to be passing it. And, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, it will find your striker. And then if you've got a striker on a blue arrow, it should be in luck. That's about as close as I'll ever get to a tutorial because I'm really not that good at this game. But that is just one thing that I've always done, and it does work. Oh, good ball out here to Herrera. Mandrina looking to strike back. We've seen a lot of overhead kicks in recent episodes. Thankfully, we weren't punished by one there. Oh, my God. We are just forcing them into mistake after mistake, allowing them to pass it around their back line. But as soon as they get anywhere closer, the press is being executed to perfection. It's just forcing them into awful passes like that one. Reginaldo, lovely ball. Now Real into Marilison on the turn. Renan on the overlap. Dave Renan's ball in is blocked, and that will be half time here at the Moises Lucarelli. It's been a pretty uneventful half. I don't think there would have been that many uh, highlights in general. I think they might have actually had higher possession, but we didn't allow them to do anything with it at all. Um, we've looked great today. I mean, they've obviously come with a game plan. Toledo has set them out and just said, just frustrate them, keep hold of the ball, try and build an attack, but they've not been able to build anything. And uh, although they are frustrating us, 
we were able to make them make mistakes and uh, one big one led to our goal. Could have had another as well. Quiet game so far from Oliveira, who's been the real standout in recent games. Marilison again on the score sheet. <sighs> Is there anything he can't do at the moment? Will he be able to continue this form after the dramatic improvement leaves? That's the big question on everyone's lips at the moment. But anyway, let's finish this one off. Let's get another goal, make it safe. Oh, danger here as Herrera makes his way into the box. It's not a clearance that you like to see, but we do get it away, and Marilison now can find Igor. Igor will bring it over the halfway line here. Good running from the central midfielder. Strong running. Can he push it forward to Asano? Yes, he can. That's a good ball. Asano, time to look up here. Floats one in towards Marilison. Could fall here. Oh, could fall to Marilison. Yes. Well, when the goals be coming. They certainly be coming. And that's an old Brazilian phrase that you may not have heard, even if you are Brazilian. If the goals be coming, they're coming. I don't, that just, that's, that's stupid. But Marilson, yeah, everything he is touching at the moment is turning to goals. It was a great counter-attack. Igor, again, just great work from him. Good workman-like stuff from the midfielder. I think that was Diego Renan who went for the overhead kick. And then the ball just happened to fall neatly to uh, Bob Marilson. And uh, we've got it. We've got the second. That's what we wanted. Can he get his first hat-trick today? Forcing them long. Bruno Vini, great header there. Now Igor. Marilson on the turn. Really nicely done there. Now Arnaldo. Ball in. Igor's there with the header. Oh, almost getting his first goal of the season, which would be richly deserved. Not for a good save there. It's a free kick here. Not a particularly useful situation, so we'll keep it moving. Back out to Luis Carlos. Bit of a wild pass there. Now Oliveira into Real. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, into Oliveira. Can he score here? Oh, just didn't really get hold of that properly. Really unlucky, but Marilson's won it back. Asano back onto the right. Oh, not far away at all. And we just look irresistible at the moment. We're pestering them, we're harassing them, winning it back there. Marilson, all sorts of good work from him. And Asano, great work to get it back onto his right. But wide. Oh, Real wins it back from Oliveira. He had no right to. Now to Kuma Asano. Oh. So 10 minutes left and the traditional triple sub. Abner will get a run out here. Oh, I just don't know who to play. I really don't know who to play. Vargas gets a run as well as Eduardo. He'll get a few minutes here. And it's Eduardo on the ball here. Straight into Marilson. Almost considered the shot there. But he's out to Asano. Asano spots Abner at the far post. It's not a good ball. Chance for a late consolation goal here for the visitors. Concalvez steps back. It's a floated ball. Abner heads away. I think he's offside anyway. That's pretty much us done here. Ten seconds left. And no, it's a free kick. Fine. Doesn't really bother us too much. There's very little time left in this one. We'd like to keep the clean sheet. Ivan has barely been troubled on a downward arrow today. And it's made next to no difference to this game. And Eduardo will hit it high into the Campina sky. And that is another comfortable win. And another brace for young Bob Madison. Oh, we are going to be jamming. To, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to dash that Bob Madison nickname. I don't like it. I don't know why I, don't know why I thought I did. Bob Madison, Bob Madison. It's not for me. So, Madison. Just plain Madison. Just plain incredible at the moment. I just don't believe it. Zico has just polished this rough diamond to a point now where it's hard to imagine Roger getting a shout but as I said that will all change when his dramatic improvement ends and a quiet game as I said for Oliveira today Asano had a couple of chances Oliveira did have a chance to score um, Diego Renan a poor game he could have maybe started Abner today it might have been the right choice Avini after everything we said about him obviously gets a five that was always going to happen it did not matter at all Londrina were truly truly terrible and there we are, second in the league. And that is a fairly healthy now five-point gap between us and fifth-placed West. And we've still only lost one game, and we've conceded the second-least in the league. And Curitiba, the one side to beat us so far, are the side at the top of the table. So it looks like we've already played the best team in the league once, if it isn't us. So things are looking very, very rosy for us at the moment. We did not see this coming, to be honest. This team is starting to play some really nice football. Just the quality of players that we've got, the great business we did in the transfer window is starting to show, I think. So that is now six wins in a row. That is some streak. Let's take a look at the messages. Anything of interest in here? Some role changes. Nothing particularly interesting there. Um, we have got the scouts out, haven't we? We did change the scouts. Yeah, we did change the scouts. So we'll see what happens there. 
Let's take a look at Madison's training, actually. Is he improving as we would like? What are we training him up on? Finishing, acceleration, yeah. That works for me, yeah. I think dummy runner. It's not one you would really choose, is it? But it seems to be working pretty well. And you would hope that this would be going up quicker than it is. 67 rated at the moment. I think he was 67 rated to begin with anyway, so that's not actually gone up yet, despite five or six games of a dramatic improvement. It's not as dramatic as it used to be, I think we can safely say that. But just having the blue arrow all the time has been massive for us. That gives you a boost in stats, which is significant, especially in every single game. Right, let's get into the second game of the episode. So having said what I said before the last game, we are going north now as we travel away. Nine hours north, in fact, to the city of, and I'm going to butcher this, Goiana, Goiania. But anyway, it's Atletico Goianense, the team from the city of, yeah, Goianinia, I'm not sure, not sure. Uh, they've been in Serie A as recently as 2017, and they finished sixth, so only two places away from promotion last season. So, a pretty decent side, you would expect. So let's have a look at Atletico Goianese's team. Yeah, lots of 67, I mean, as I said, just look at the quality of our side. We should be getting promoted with the players that we've got. Some of these were players that we already had. You know, we've got, what's that, one, two, three... Four, five, six, seventy plus rated players who are already at the club. That's pretty impressive. That is pretty impressive. I'm thinking we are. Oh, I don't want to make the decision to swap over Marison and Roger permanently. I still am undecided on what to do with that. Although today, with Asana on a downward arrow, I'm going to try something different. This could backfire massively. I don't want to play him out there. We're going to play Marison as a second striker out on the wing. It's not the right place for him. We'll give it a go, and these two swap over so much that it could work. Oh, you don't want to change a winning formula, but with Asano on a downward arrow, we don't really have any other options out on the wing. Uh, Oliveira back in, obviously, and we're going to drop Renan today with Avner on an upward arrow. As I've mentioned to a lot of you, I think you know form is going to be a big deciding factor at the moment. It's sort of a nice get-out as well, that we can drop players, rotate players, when maybe we wouldn't normally. Uh, Bruno Avini on a downward arrow and tied. I guess we have to bring in... Renan Fonseca also on a downward arrow. So that is a bit of a gap there at the back. That's unfortunate. Team Spirit down to 63 with those changes. Not ideal, especially away from home. Uh, we've got Roger up top. They've got Mike up top. I love this Brazilian style of just using <laughs> the most basic names like Fred and Roger and Mike. <laughs> just, I just love it. I know it's probably not their real name. Their real name is probably like five or six elaborate, long Portuguese words, but I still enjoy it. So Oliveira on a blue, Marison continuing his dramatic improvement. Hopefully having a slightly weaker centre-back duo won't affect us. At least Ivan's back on form and Abner in today. Can he cause havoc down that left-hand side? I hope so. Let's go. So here we are under the lights in Guyana. It's a good turnout today. Um, but this team have got, to be, have got to be scared. We are the form side, surely, in the Serie B. We've got players in great form, young players coming through. Rog back in the side today. It's the first time we've ever seen Brodge and Marilison up front together. Could it work? Will it work? I don't know. The pace of Asano and his sort of adaptability has been really useful out on that wing. Marilison's certainly not a player like that. But we'll find out. We've certainly got a goal through it. Free kick taken quickly into Igor. Now Oliveira on a blue arrow today. It's good work there, finds Arnaldo, got the assist for the first goal in the last game. Plays it back to Real, now Igor, lovely flick into Thiago Real, now into Oliveira. Can he open the scoring here? Oh, the jogger Bonita is here, officially has arrived. I mean, we're not in Campinas anymore, but this is the football that Zico will be wanting to see. Back heels, lovely ball through, outside of the boot, poke from Oliveira, just can't beat the keeper. Tiago Real with a corner here. I don't think we've scored from a corner yet, and that's not going to be the one we score from. It's out to Luis Carlos. He's hit it pretty well, actually. Kept his knee over it. Obviously yet to score. He is very much a defensive midfielder. And uh, not the worst hit in the world, but wide. Easy ball to cut out there. Now Carlos, that's a smart ball into Oliveira. Got two ahead of him. Oliveira, oh, lifts a lovely ball into Brodge with the right, yes. Brodge, 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 Brodge. A lot of you were trying to work out a way that we could play Brodge in this side with Marison. I, I don't think we can play Brodge, Marison and Asano. I just don't think that's going to work. We place so much importance on our midfield in this to play three strikers. I just don't think there's a way of doing it, even playing a second striker. 
but it's certainly nice to have Broj as an option here. And that's lovely work from Oliveira here. Just driving forward, cuts inside. That's a smart ball. That is a very smart ball. And Broj, cool, calm, collected, gets it onto his right. A little poke. This time the keeper's beaten. Look at this ball from Oliveira. On his weaker foot as well, the deftest of chips into only a very small target area where that would have worked. And a decent finish as well. And we're off the mark here. Good ball thrown to Mike and Anton Seca, aware of the danger. And the captain today with Avini out of the side can bring it forward. Oliveira into Abner. Returns the favour into Oliveira. Big chance here. Don't know what Renan's still doing up. But Oliveira will have a go. Oh, that's rash. Unlucky. Good driving run, though. Oh, God, that's awful. Real out to Marlison. Steps inside. Can he get on the score sheet again? <laughs> yes, he can. We share the goals here. We should, we're just all about winning at the moment. We're a team just hell-bent on scoring goals. And it's Brodge and Marlison on the score sheet today. There's no rivalry between them. There's no rivalries in this team. We're one team, and that is just awful. We're not playing a high-pressure game, but actually, it sort of, in a way, makes the high press easier to do. I don't know if I'm making that up, but playing a more conservative defence and allowing you to sort of monitor and do the high press just with player selection, using the square button as well, just seems to work well. And we just force teams into these mistakes, and then we've got the quality to punish them when we do win the ball, ball back. And that's it. 2-0 again. Abner looks to go on the outside of Louise, cuts back in and finds Oliveira. Been controlling the game today, and that's simple into Igor. Out to Marilison. Oh, lovely run, Thiago Real. Oh, looks to flick it in. And that will be it here. And another comfortable game for Ponte Preta. It just seemed to be a level above teams we're playing at the moment. I'm sure we won't be able to sustain that for the whole season, but we just look a different class. And today, we certainly do. They've not had a single shot on target. The home side have had a bit of possession, but done very little with it. But we're just looking great. No Asano today, but Marison and Broj both getting on the score sheet. You can he argue with that. Well, first bit of attacking uh, threat here from the home side. Dealt with. Only really temporarily here. That's a good ball in. Mike allowed to turn. Ivan, no issues. Lovely ball into Oliveira, and there's plenty of space for the young man to drive into here. Oh, steps away from Doug Lau. Oh, <laughs> nearly. Very nearly. Oh, mistake here. We're going to get hit. Oh, he puts it wide. Who was the error from there? We just sort of slept walked into that. It was Diego Renan who gave it away. And a ball inside. It is Big Mike. And he slips there. That's really unfortunate. The home side's first proper glimpse of goal in this game. Oliveira steps inside. Still Oliveira is fouled there. Great running again from the youngster. And that has earned us a dangerous looking free kick here. It's going to be Thiago Real. Over this one. Still yet to score a free kick here. That's too much. That's too much. That's not too much. That's not in though. What? That is incredible. VAR, where are you? That was about as close as they come. Unlucky. Triple sub here. It looks like Abner with his young legs and the blue arrow is going to make the full 90. Luis Ricardo though helps out Arnaldo and Eduardo and Vargas. We're going to get a few minutes here. Can Eduardo impress? You'd say his position in this side is probably dead and buried. But Vargas oh, off the bar, <laughs> unlucky. First touch of the game there for a, a very capable midfielder. I like Vargas. He's a good option on the bench. Sadly, he'll probably be one of those sort of players that we end up selling to finance new players, but he's always impressed coming on. And the number 10 there, narrowly missing the third goal for us. Abner looks to put Oliveira through into space. It's a good ball. Now Oliveira... Steps inside, it's fallen to Broj, edge of the box, time to wind one up. <laughs> Forces a good save, but Oliveira again. Just so quick, so dangerous. Just supplies something that Eduardo and Real simply can't. It's fallen kindly to Broj, <laughs> time to really blast that one. Forcing a great save. Oh no, we've allowed Junior through. Can I even save it here to save the clean sheet? No, he can't. That's so annoying. In pretty much the 92nd minute, we're just undone here by... Oh, 
And there we are, full time's upon us. The 92nd minute goal, an annoyance and nothing more. And the Ponte Preta train, which is very appropriate as uh, the uh, Moises Lucarelli Stadium, well known for being close to a train track. And obviously the Black Bridge as a club was founded by railway workers, much of it. So anyway, I don't know why I'm going on so much about that. But we are a train full of momentum, a momentum train, if you will. And we just took them out with early goals here and then looked solid for the rest of the game. Some lovely close touch passing around the box, creating both of the goals, or at least the uh, second one. And yeah, another win, seven in a row. I can barely believe it. And a fairly comprehensive one this time, even on the road, 57% possession. But as I said, you saw the difference in the players that we've got. These are the results that we should be getting. Some poor play from Abner and Arnaldo. Don't know how they were so bad. We just weren't involved, really. We didn't need them. We were doing all of our good work through the middle. Look at that. Sevens and a 7.5 for every attacking player. That's pretty impressive. Curitiba winning. They'll stay top of the table. We stay hot on their heels. And now we're pulling away. Six points now away from fifth. And only one goal difference behind them as well. That second game against Curitiba. I can't remember if it's away or home. is going to be a good one whenever that turns up. And next episode, well, we've got a game only three days later. We did some rotation, so hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, what messages have we got? Reginaldo, whatever. So there we are. Brilliant. It just keeps working. Zico is having a really big effect on this side. There's no doubt about it. He's come in. He's made some great signings. And, uh, you know, despite difficulties at the beginning, which is always going to happen when you change the playing style and playing ethos of a team, uh, is working. It's certainly working. They've changed it completely. This was a defensive side. We're now a beautiful football attacking side. And it seems to be paying off. Join me in the next episode to see if it can continue paying off, which I will be blown away by. If we can get eight wins in a row, that is unprecedented. I don't know what my longest win streak is. We did have a big one with Leeds last season, actually. Surely it couldn't have been much more than this. I'll see you in a bit.